What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another episode of Predict the Prem, where we and my brother go head-to-head -head in predicting Premier League outcomes. The scores between us at the moment are 263 to 274. Five points for a correct scoreline, one point for a correct result. And the star man, once you pick them, you can't pick them again for the rest of the season. Five points for a goal, three points for an assist. And let's get into our predictions. Manchester United against Everton at Old Trafford. Sim's gone for 3-0. Why have you gone for 3-0? Why have I gone for 3-0? Because I just, look, I know Everton battled hard to get a result against us, but I see them sitting back in, in this game. And I think Man United's home form, uh, once they do take the lead, they're very hard to stop. And I know Brentford were able to keep the score down to 1-0, but I don't think Everton are as good as Brentford. And I see them battling, but... Once they open up a bit, I see Man United killed, killing them off. And I know they've got a midweek. Uh, I think they've got Europa League a midweek. So they might have half an hour on that. But they know they're back in the top four now. So I do expect a full-strength team. So I think 3-0. I wasn't that impressed with Everton on, on against us, even though they got a point. Yeah. Um, look, I'm... I'm going for 2-0, pretty similar um, thinking behind uh, what you're saying. They're very strong at home, Man United. They are finding goals a bit hard to come by in the last couple of games, Manchester United, but I do think their scoring boots will be back on. But I feel like Everton will set up to frustrate, so I don't see it being a complete battering 3-4-0. But um, I've gone for 2-0 to Man United. Next up is Aston Villa against Nottingham Forest. I've gone for 3-0 uh, for Aston Villa to beat Forest. I think Forest have wow. been absolutely terrible on the road. I've been really impressed with Villa, uh, mainly on the road. But they have been starting to pick up results at home as well. And they have been starting to score quite a few goals. Ollie Watkins uh, being in firing form as well. So I've gone for a Villa battering at uh, Villa Park. Yeah, I've gone for 2-1. I think it'll be a bit of a tighter game. Forest usually, um, it's usually tight results when it when it involves Nottingham Forest albeit they did lose to Spurs 3-1 but apart from that game it's the results are usually quite tight West Ham um, they did lose 4-0 to, to West Ham as well but that was uh, yeah f uh, a few games ago um, I just think that um, they'll go they'll go obviously try and hit the hit Villa on the counter and I do think Villa are um, worse when they play these kind of teams who look to frustrate them rather than teams who look to attack them and I do think Forest look to frustrate them so I and also I don't think Villa's defense is that is particularly fantastic so uh, they do concede a few goals so I've gone for Forest to score but with the momentum Villa have and the confidence they have I do see them winning so I've gone for a 2-1 win to Villa all right next up Brentford against Newcastle which is going to be an interesting matchup um Sim what are you thinking 2-2 yeah I've gone for 2-2 I think Brentford uh, again they lost in midweek but you know it was only 1-0 there was always very very close when it when it when it's when it comes to Brentford and I do think there there will be set up to give um Newcastle a big test uh, at at uh, at home Newcastle are in great form don't get me wrong and uh, Isaac and Wilson both scoring now so I do see them being able to um, answer some of Brentford's questions but Brentford from set pieces and um, the way they open teams up from Buemo and Tony um, I do th I think at home they will cause Newcastle some trouble so um, I've just gone for an even game 2-2 two -two. yeah I think Brentford um, always you know um, perform at home and I think that since the return since after football of the World Cup they've been really strong at home only losing one game albeit I do think this is their probably their biggest test at home since uh, the return of football from the World Cup but I expect them to stand up to the challenge yes Newcastle on really good form four wins in, in their last four games scoring a lot of goals as well but I feel like that, that scoreline against West Ham was a bit of a full scoreline just because West Ham just kept giving them goals and goals and goals albeit they did deserve to win the game no, no doubt about it but I think this will be a def, uh, much different outfit for uh, Newcastle to come up against and I think they'll be a bit more resolute than West Ham were on the day so I've gone for 1-1 next up Fulham against West Ham in a London derby Sim's gone for 0-0 I've gone for 1-1 um, both of these teams not really performing well at the moment. Fulham got a lot of suspensions at the moment with Mitrovic and um, stuff like that. So they don't really have a focal point up front. Um, albeit they are getting results at home for them and they haven't dropped points at home uh, for a while, I think. But West Ham, I think, are just um, 
if they come up against a solid outfit, I do think they'll lose the game. But with both teams out of form, I've gone for it to go 1-1. Yeah, I just think Fulham are a bit on the beach at the moment. I don't, I, I, without Mitrovic as well, I do see them struggling to really hurt this West Ham team, albeit West Ham were all over the place against Newcastle. <laughs> They'll want to put that right. Um, but I also think they're going to make sure that it's they're defensively solid first before really giving Fulham a lot of trouble. So I just see a bit of a nil-nil stalemate here. I just think both teams are going to struggle to score. Leicester Bournemouth up next. Uh, Sim 1-1. One, one. Wow. Yeah, I think um, in this game, look, Leicester, new manager um, of second game. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't that impressed with them against Villa, albeit there was a very close game and they might have got, got a draw if it wasn't for a very bad mistake. But I actually think Bournemouth, despite, um, look, they're, strugg they're struggling to get consistent results, but they are playing fairly well recently, I feel, Bournemouth. And they are giving a really good account of themselves. They've really got Philip Billing involved and the, the wingers, Utara um, uh, and uh, Tavernier. Um, they're really, giving teams trouble on the counter-attack and Solanke's really come into his own so I do see them causing Leicester trouble Leicester are going to look to dominate they're going to look to um, uh, take the game to Bournemouth especially being at home and I just think their defence is very suspect and they could easily be caught out but they do have the quality going forward to hurt Bournemouth as well and Bournemouth quality-wise aren't that strong at the back so I've gone for a 1-1 draw yeah, this is a massive, massive game, and Leicester have not won a game since they beat us 4 1 that, that day. I can't believe it. Like, how have they not won a game since that game anyway? Um, yes, you're right. I have been impressed with Bournemouth of late with some good players, some good tactical shifts from the manager. But I think um, in this massive, massive game where Leicester are two, going into this two points behind Bournemouth in the relegation spots, 18th and 19th, I do think the quality that Leicester have, I do think will shine through. And with the home crowd behind them, I got a feeling that Leicester are finally going to get a win behind them in this massive game. And I do think that Leicester do have a lot of quality in that team and I think they should be okay and um, save themselves from the drop. But I do think Bournemouth are going to go down. So I've gone 2-1 to Leicester. Next up is Tottenham against Brighton. I nearly went with that scoreline Sim went for, but I don't know why, but I've gone for Spurs to draw the game 2-2. I can't give you too many reasons why I think Spurs are not going to lose this game, to be honest, but I just thought I would be kind of on the positive side, seeing as I am going to the game, it is at home. Our home form is fairly good, but I do recognise that Brighton are playing very well at the moment. Yeah, our home form is good, don't get me wrong. And Brighton um, are not like this unbeatable team, but what they are is a team full of confidence playing really good football and I actually think they're a team kind of really well suited to combating us and, and how we how we play right now <laughs> the way they draw teams out and then quickly hit them with some quick football is um, is I think going to be very hard for Tottenham to handle I do see Tottenham trying to give a bit of reaction to Monday night and come starting fast and they might, they might even take the lead but I think once the game settles down and once Bournemouth gets settled in their rhythm um, I think they're going to be really hard to stop and I think people like McAllister are going to be able to find all sorts of pockets of space and really hurt us and that's what I'm worried about um, Matoma as well he's down Poro's side Poro's not the best defensive player so I just I just feel like um, at the moment are we going to be able to manoeuvre our, ourselves in positions to really hurt this Brighton team I see it sometimes but I just feel like Brighton are structurally right now way ahead of us and from a footballing standpoint I can just see them playing through us. That's the that's the sad reality, especially as we get tired later in the game. That's when I'm really, really worried about it. So I've just gone for 3-1. And I, I as well, midfield, people like Caicedo, I see him dominating in the centre as well. I just can't see how we're not going to lose. But we might catch them on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves against Chelsea. Uh, Sims gone 1-0 Chelsea. I've gone for 1-1 in Lampard's first game back as interim for, it, for the rest of the season. I mean, I don't know. I'm just not convinced about Chelsea. They, are, they do play well without really uh, being able to find the back of the net. And I just got a feeling it could be another one of those this weekend with Wolves frustrating them and finding a goal from a set piece or something or a Ruben Neves uh, power driver. I think, um, I think the, the uh, points will be split. I mean, similar to Leicester, apart from being us, they're really struggling to pick up wins at the moment, yeah. Wolves. And I feel like um, Chelsea, last few games, they've had really good control of the game, but the finishing's been letting them down. Maybe a new manager there, maybe something might uh, change for them and may they'll be able to get, um, get one over the line. I see them having similar amounts of control of this game. I think Wolves are not playing very well at the moment at all. And I see them, look, Chelsea is stock full of quality and I see them um, having control, 
creating chances. And I think they're just going to win the game 1-0. Um, all right, next up, Southampton against Manchester City. I've gone for 4-0 to Manchester City. I think Man, Man City are really... Um, playing well at the moment probably their best moment in the season they're looking a bit unbeatable and um, players like Jack Grealish and players like um, Erling Haaland to come back in Alvarez uh, all playing really well and they're just dominating teams and absolutely battering teams and against the worst uh, team in form in the league or the best or the team at the bottom of the league in Southampton I think it's going to be a demolition job yeah I kind of agree I've gone for Southampton to get a, get a goal just because they're at home and it's a big game and I think they've actually played quite well recently against um, Man City when they do come up against them so I've got them to get a goal but I think Man, <coughs> Man City should be able to sweep them aside fairly comfortably um, people like Grealish as well now coming into form we don't know if Haaland's going to play or not but whether he plays it's pretty irrelevant because they're still pretty dynamite and uh, yeah I think Man City are really coming into their own now so I do think they're going to sweep aside the Southampton team Leeds against Crystal Palace Sim's gone 2-1 to Leeds I've gone for 2-2 um, I mean Palace were really impressive in Roy Hodgson's first game uh, with that win in the last game against Leicester I think it was Leeds also playing fairly well getting wins behind them as well so I mean, I think they're just going to cancel out each other, but I actually think it's going to be a really entertaining game of football. So I've gone 2-2. Yeah, I just think with Palace now missing Zaha, his, him being um, off injured uh, and he's going to miss the next few games, I do see them really um, missing that cutting edge in the forward line, despite I do see them creating openings. So I think without Zaha, they just have that, maybe miss a bit of that ruthlessness. Whereas, whereas Leeds right now... Um, that at home they just had a really big win in midweek um, Sinister is now um, um, coming into the team and he's playing really well um, and I think that Ellen Road crowd behind them um, and if they're putting pressure like they did against um, who, uh, who they beat him at Como they've been, been weak but who they won against uh, Forest if they do something similar against Palace I see them just getting over the line and getting the victory so I've gone for I think Leeds are playing well at the moment so I'm confident to win all right, and last but not least, Liverpool against Arsenal at Anfield. Sims gone for three-two to Liverpool. I've gone for one-one. Mm. See there, look, it's a big, uh, big game for Liverpool because look, they've got nothing else to play for. They know they need a win in this game, otherwise, literally, they can kiss top four goodbye. So uh, that after not not winning two games in a row, I really think they're going to go really strong. And I think the selection in midweek might even they they rested pretty much all that a lot of their big players. I don't know if they rest them for this game but they rest they did rest them and I think they're going to be a lot fresher um in this game they're a bit different team at Anfield they've beaten Man City they've beaten um uh they've beaten Man, Man United 7-0 recently so I think they're a much different proposition at Anfield and I think they're going to give Larson a tough tough time but what Liverpool do do is they um, throw caution to the wind and they throw players forward and they leave gaps and Arsenal are experts at exploiting those gaps, especially with the speed they have. So I definitely see Arsenal getting chances and goals, but I just think uh, uh, Liverpool Anfield, very difficult proposition. And I see, uh, and I see um, them being fresh after midweek, so I've gone for them to get the win. Yeah, I think both these teams kind of play into each other's hands the way they, they play each other. I think Arsenal will leave gaps in behind for Liverpool and Liverpool will leave gaps in behind for Arsenal. And I think Arsenal are obviously the better team coming into this being top of the league. Liverpool um, at home, they, they can pull out performances. But then then again, um, you know, with the quality that Liverpool is showing at the moment, they can have off days at home like we saw against Real Madrid um, in the Champions League when they got battered 5-2. So um, it's very much up in the air. I think if, if we can find, we need Liverpool to get to be on a really good day um, if they're going to take all three points to, um, on the weekend. Let's hope it can happen. Um, but I'll be happy with a 1-1 draw. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Uh, but now I'm thinking about it, it probably will be 2-2 if it's going to be a draw, but I'm going to stick hmm. with 1-1 anyway. But I do think it's going to be a really interesting game of football. Um, and um, very end-to-end. -end I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you one thing there, if Arsenal do win, I think it might be theirs this title. Yeah, I have to say, I'd agree with that. <laughs> I'd agree with that. And it, yeah, I mean, if they do win this, I mean, even if they lose at the Etihad, mm -hmm. does, it, does it really make a difference? Unless they're going to lose in an, uh, another game, another two game. No, if they lose it because it's eight points with the game in hand. Yeah, so, so unless okay, so unless they're going to lose another game apart from the Liverpool game and Man City are perfect. I mean, it's difficult to see the where they're going to drop points. Maybe uh, the St James's. 
Well, yes, St. James is a. I mean, they will. Yeah. I think they will drop points at St. James's. Mm. So then there's another option, but City then still have to be perfect. Yeah, and City got hard games as well. Mm. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to our star men and a big studded star li star lineup on star men today. Same thing for Bruno Fernandez, and I've gone for Jack Grealish. I was thinking of Drew Grealish because I was looking at City players who haven't picked, and Grealish was up there. But I was like, oh, you know, what? I'm going to wait for a home game for him to play. But yeah, I went for Bruno uh, home to Everton. Obviously, he's going to be on penalties and and things like that. So um, I do think the way Everton set up could be um, quite key for a a allowing Bruno some time and space to <coughs> do, do his thing. Um, so I've gone for him to do something in this game. Yeah, I think Jack Grealish is really just central to everything that Man City are doing at the moment. He's he's literally the man on form on the wings for them. Um, a lot of is coming through him. He's scoring goals. He's assisting goals. And he's really announcing himself as a Pep uh, Guardiola winger now. So um, credit to him. And let's hope he can get on the score sheet and get a couple of goals for me this weekend. But that is your predict. The Prem, let me know your predictions. Let me know who you think is going to come out on top. And let me know who you think the star man is going to be this weekend. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on